everybody. Welcome to VFX and Chill. Hey, everyone. With Hashi and me, Seth. And this week, Hashi, I I just want to dive right into it. Should we just introduce our guest immediately? Let's introduce our guest immediately. Okay. It's why the people are here. It's what the people are. Hi, Ryan. Ryan. Hi. Hi. Welcome to our show. This is Ryan Connolly of YouTube's Film Riot. Uh, He owns and runs and is Triune Films. He... Loves you, loves me, loves Hashi, and we love him. <laughs> I just love, just love people. Just love people. Ryan, so how are you, sir? I'm doing good, man. How, how are you guys? We're good. We're good. We're well. Super prepared. Yeah, so prepared Everyone. that I realized <laughs> I got to put my AirPod in because oh, my or this show's going to echo again. When I dropped the AirPods on the floor. This is a really great episode so <laughs> it's, far. It's gone to hell already. Hashi and Ryan, talk amongst <laughs> yourselves while I see if my AirPods fell down a dream. Hi, Hashi. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> I like how the greet screen's set up because it's like when Seth goes in a direction, it's yeah. like he goes into me somehow. It's like a, it's a moment from it's the Frighteners. Oh, oh. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yes. Wow. I am becoming him. <laughs> Finally, we're becoming one. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, uh, just, uh, just a couple hours of this, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> hours? But uh, <laughs> yeah, Stick around. <laughs> yeah. So, Ryan, how are you doing? What are you up to? What is Film Riot up to? Doing good, man. Uh, a little bit of the, you know, uh, same old, same old. Just producing episodes. You know how it goes, baby. Yeah, doing a, a little bit of uh, everything. You know, we talk about it on the show, you know, pitching things and whatnot behind the scenes, uh, you know, doing different things with Phil Riot, uh, trying to get to more content, bringing on more people, you know, growing stuff. We're doing a Shang- uh, Shang-Chi episode right now, which was supposed to come up this week, but had moved to next week i think i saw you guys did something about that so we probably just shouldn't have attempted we're just going to embarrass ourselves well yeah well okay, there we, you go. We, we did the the like yeah one and a half hour version of uh yeah whatever it we was attempted. we and, and my and that'll still be better <laughs> and that was an episode that i remember was the first time i was like i'm going to open up the uh the chat and have it running like while the show's going so i can see what people are saying big mistake because i the one comment i saw was this looks like cousin VFX or nephew? What is it? Cousin VFX or nephew VFX? Nephew. It's yeah, nephew VFX. Oh, nephew VFX. Oh, and I, I would it, it, what it ruined me. Uh, you know, oh, nephew VFX or let's, it's like did Corridor coin that? It's, it, it's it describes it the the idea of oh I have yeah. a nephew who does that and then you you oh. get to see their videos and it's not to throw shade on any new beginners, any nephews. Right. but there's a you know. Yeah, you know, don't have an uncle is <laughs> saying <laughs> nothing yeah. against nephew. But, but I saw that comment, yeah, you, and it, like you notice that nieces don't get singled out because you know their work is their work outstanding. Is outstanding. Yeah. I, I I just remember seeing it and being I'm being like, okay, this isn't looking very good. But once I get it through super comp, it's gonna look great. And then I saw that comment and went, no, it's not. It's just gonna look this like this. <laughs> he just he just he just spiraled. I did, Ryan. He just you watch me. You you watch me in the episode. Just a slow dip. <laughs> It's just like you know what? Let's just stop doing the effects. Let's get Seth's therapist on the line. Let's let's go in a different direction. Well, now here. now hot, now Ryan, you're just referencing our texts, our, our weekly text messages between the two of us. Um. Oh, hey, uh, Ryan. Matthew Pencala wants you to plug Tryon Digital. Well, I I think we just did. Tryondigital.com. I got some things Tryon in that store. Go buy everything with my Assets name on it. and stuff. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Only buy things that Seth was involved. Yes. In. If it says Whirly on the end, oh, your exactly. brother has some stuff, so that would be more than. That's true. Buy my brother stuff too. Hey, listen, Ryan, we asked you to come to the show with a VFX with a recommendation for a VFX shot that we should talk about, explore, recreate. Yeah. And you were like, "Sure. How about one of the greatest VFX shots of all time, according to us and all of our friends?" I'm sure it's it's yeah. uh, it's acknowledged by that way by some prestigious venue in some way. But uh, yes, talk about it. Which one are you? What are we doing today? Yeah, it's that shot from from Contact after you know the the situation with her father happens and she's running to get his medication and she's running through the hallway and 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 the shot morphs into something entirely unexpected. Um, what you're playing here so i'll just let it happen but it's just such a beautiful shot and so many 
for so many different reasons. Like one, it's just when I saw it, I did it didn't register at first the first time I saw it, and then all of a sudden I was like, wait, hold on, hold on a second. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because it's so. I mean, for me, my favorite visual effects shots are shots like this where, yeah, it's incredible and what they pulled off was awesome, but it was also invisible in a way, but not quite. And so stitched into the fabric of the story elements at it's that so moment. so story like, driven. Very, yeah. Yeah. Very specifically done to mirror her emotion, the disorientation of what's happening and then how they ended on the picture in the end. So it's this amazing visual effect shot, but not this amazing visual effect shot just to be one. It was there specifically to service the story. And um, so it's those, those two things uh, together that, and I know it's like one of, if not your favorite visual effect shot as well, but it's just one when everyone and whenever anyone says what's, the best visual effect like my first thought is this this shot and i think it's for those reasons that it's not just hey this cool thing that they pulled off yeah it's this really cool thing but that was important to the moment and it's mm -hmm. it's one of my favorite shots of uh, vfx shots too because of how simple it is and how like it is like probably the most simple approach to this shot um with the most massive results. Yeah. Like it's this ratio of like, yeah. it's, it's, it's essentially two shots, technically three, if you count the end of the shot, but like the main mm -hmm. impact, well, actually I do want to count the third shot because that's what ties the whole thing. So brilliantly together, storytelling wise. So, yeah. Um, to walk through it real quick, uh, let's wait here. Let's start to reloop. So it's a steady cam shot with the steady cam operator running, backwards up the stairs <laughs> upstairs no problem no problem at all well he might be running forward with just aiming backward as they and keeping do. her in frame brilliantly so she comes around and then we ramp and this is in camera ramp this isn't in post it's, it's a real yeah true yeah ramp. and so uh she runs through and right there we have it's two shots we have one where she's reaching toward the city cam operator and then it and then the steady cam operator pans right and so she's like reaching toward camera camera pans right and then we have a b plate which is the mirror and the frame with blue on with the, just a blue screen on the mirror no actual glass there <clears throat> and they're just composited on top of each other and there was there was some reconstruction of her hand to make it fully match like line up with their hand in the foreground but they nail it. Oh, it's really fun to go through that. frame by frame because they do some slight. Um, I, I don't know which they use as the as the primary source, but I think I would imagine the one in the reflection is what they is they, their primary. They you you can see that there are some moments where the the both hands are stepped to move up and down. If you're stepping through it, it's it's so closely coordinated it's remarkable and then to tie it all yeah. together what's so good you're focusing on the medicine which is like has been such a big story thing set up for the dad and then as the thing closes a picture of them in a reflection in the reflection as it closes it's just so brilliant it's so good <laughs> reflecting yeah. something that wasn't there when yeah the door, <laughs> exactly <laughs> but but <laughs> but who's counting <laughs> exactly but, i this I, is my favorite kind of VFX shot. It's it's entirely 2D, <laughs> first off. Uh, and I'm a yeah. sucker for this. Like the 80s and 90s are like, well, not just 80s and 90s, like the beginning of filmmaking, like the Lumiere brothers. And with um, uh, uh, George Millet, uh, I just completely yeah. mispronounced his name. But they're like... I love the effects. Magic. Yeah, magic tricks. The effects that are, that are yeah. based entirely on shooting like imagery and then cleverly compositing that imagery. Um 3D is obviously amazing. 3D artists are like I am. I am in awe of all 3D artists, including uh, present company. And I, but like my favorite kind of shot is where you shoot you shoot two plates, you composite them on top of each other, or you find a clever way to stitch them, and you end up with something that is way far greater than the sum of its parts. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> and I and I just love the moment where she like that's coming up where where all of a sudden you realize you're not in that normal shot anymore that you're in this impossible thing when you get the handle like the handle peeks in and it starts. Well, it looks like a doorknob. This, I'm sorry. What's it look, the texture of it? Yeah, it, it feels bit. like another door frame that you're going through. So for a second, it does. Yeah. And yeah, then I the hand peeks in, and it's really like so good. Sorry, what? 
I but looped so it for my son this ma- morning, who's 10, and he and so I said, we're covering this today, and I'd like you to watch this shot. And so he watched it through and was like, um, and couldn't figure out the effect. And then He's on like, the second no loop, big deal. He was Here's like, exactly how you do it. Oh, <laughs> there, yeah, yeah, you couldn't do that. <laughs> Yeah, which is exciting. But I love I love how it mirrors her sort of emotional state. It's like, you know, we're disoriented with her uh, in that moment. Uh, so it's just, yeah, all those things combined. It's just uh, and it's, it's and it's just shot. slightly showy. Like it's just above in like it's just above invisible. Like it's just showy enough. That's like the yeah. patented Robert yeah. Zemeckis VFX shot, which is it's like uh, it's it completely entirely serves story. But it's just above reality and and a little bit braggy and show offy, like all of what lies beneath. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> all of it. I love it. That's amazing. So that's it. That's the show. So, We're uh, yes. we have to do this now. Uh, absolutely. So so how do so how do we approach this then, Seth? Well, like I said, and I pulled this. By the way, big shout out to Ian Fails and who now. Uh, uh, runs and publishes amazing VFX articles at uh, Before Afters. And he also, prior to that, had a blog that was called VFX Blog. And he interviewed Ken Ralston, VFX supervisor for Contact. Did we mention this is from the movie Contact? I, don't, I think I forgot to say that. This is... Yeah. yeah okay, yeah. cool. Yes. Um, Which is also just a great yeah, movie. Yeah, it is. Uh, it, it's Zemeckis like still on the waves of Forrest Gump. So he's still got his like... Uh, yeah, it's still he got his Forrest Gump voice pl- going with combined with Carl Sagan. It's great. The... Um, uh, oh, yeah. I just want to make sure everyone knows Ian Fails' rules. And he did this amazing article, like, right up back in 2017 or 18, where he interviewed Ken Ralston. He got, like, I had never seen actual imagery of plates, of the, of the original plates before. And he got these from Imageworks. And you can see, uh, let me actually go, I'll make it full screen, but you can see the. And you guys tell me if it's a bad idea. I So the original approach is very much my bread and butter of li- the simplest solution, as little work as possible, uh, entirely two dimensions. Um, so I figured I might, <laughs> I might try to recreate it the original way. And Hashi, whose bread and butter is being much more skilled at everything than me, I thought it'd be fun if if you're up for it to try and tackle it the way that maybe it would be tackled now. Uh, I will try to think about that. Yeah, we, I'm. It's funny because the simplicity of the shot is it, it, it's so clever and tight that I I look at it and think like, how would we mess it up with our complicated <laughs> technology these days? But don't you think now so, they would shoot? They would do a 3D mirror and like on a 3D wall or something with a, they would rebuild her hand. It's, it's quite possible they could like they that yeah the entire she's second in a half of the shot suit. would be <laughs> done. Now. Everyone's in a mocap suits. <laughs> she's in a mo- Yeah. The yeah. mirror is in a mocap <laughs> suit. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love it. So, I think that I will experiment with that for a little bit and should I fail, I do have a backup which is um just mirrors in general are fun. And uh, and obviously reflections are tricky, but sometimes they can be used for a fun storytelling purpose. And a couple times before I have done reflection-y related work where I needed to add or remove a reflection from something, specifically, you know, camera mm-hmm. or crew kinds of things. And so That's I can walk through the like 3D tract and 2D process of uh, how you could do something like that. Nice. Oh, yeah. You've That's done always some, such a pain. Yeah. You've done some stuff like that on Action Movie Kid, right? With... Uh with james yeah i have one clip i can show when i yeah when we get to that um real quick i'll show i did a test yesterday um with no no people in it i just shot two moving plates upstairs in my playroom Uh, and then i just to just to give you an example of like how it's structured i you know i tracked some text in so you'd see there's shot a and there's shot b in my girl's bathroom i did it with simple masking i didn't do a blue screen um and what's funny is that room 
to the that we pass right after the titles to the right right there that's actually the bathroom so like i'm going into my daughter's room there but then coming out of the mirror in the bathroom that's in right in there um oh that's great and it's so funny it like it i mean it works, it works right it does like so yeah. So I last night had my son film me. So I'm going to be on the right. Hashi's on the left. We're going to try and keep our After Effects up on screen together uh, again this week. But I shot a couple. My Elliot, my son Elliot, shot who is a absolutely a director uh, already in his own right, uh, freakishly talented. Uh, did this, you know, solo steady cam shot with no actual steady cam uh, on his phone. Uh, with me at giving an incredible performance, running up some stairs. I, you've got to get, get, get to that medicine. This. I got to get that medicine. I got to get it. Your dad. Your dad needs it. Go. And he did the pan with the uh, Ooh, reach out. Yeah. So nailed the pan. Yeah. Wow. Um, and it, that's a good. I clip, should point man. out, I pulled up the clip to show Elliot, and I was like, "So this is what we're gonna do. We you never seen this movie yet, um, but." I like that your daughter's peeking out of the room yep. too. Like, what are you oh yeah, hundred percent. That's a normal <laughs> thing in my family. What weird thing is dad doing today? Um, yeah. <laughs> and so I showed Elliot the scene, and he goes, "Oh, I've seen this on Corridor." And then it was like, "Here, give me the camera." <laughs> yeah. I was uh, like, "Okay, so you already know how to do I got it." This. Yeah. <laughs> You've already probably done it yourself. <laughs> and then I have this plate, this B plate, uh, where I put green screen up on that same mirror, and I pull back. And I'm operating and acting at the same time. And I pull the VFX and chill mug out because I keep my mugs in the upstairs bathroom. <laughs> That's where does. you are in the morning. Yeah. That's where it, it, it's hand. Where do you get your coffee? <laughs> uh so yeah, I that's I've got these two plates. I'm gonna try and stitch them together. I do realize that I did something very stupid. I shot the A plate. In at sixty frames per second to be able to slow it down, oh, but I shot the B plate mm. at twenty four. Ooh, we might need some uh, interpolation here, or you let the B plate just be rule the timing. Right? I, I could, I could try that. I also went ahead and spit out. I just pretended like I just noticed that, but I noticed it earlier when I was prepping. So I went ahead and tried to stick to like spit out an interpolated version that looks bad, but maybe. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. Uh, David Fairchild suggests that to build on last week's episode, we have Tom Holland run to the mirror and it turns into Tobey Maguire. But the rest <laughs> of the chat, <laughs> but the rest of the chat is concerned with how laggy the stream has become. Oh no, laggy. Um, okay, let's see. Well, let's see how laggy is this. Are we still? Oh, where'd Ryan go? <laughs> oh no. I was in an abyss. Are we laggy? <laughs> it was a horrible place. Hmm. They lag. The chat says the lagginess seems to have gone away. Well then, how about I go All back right. to After Effects and keep working? I think I may be. I think I may be lagging um, because even on my screen here, I'm I'm behind. For me. Oh man. Well. <sighs> Well, we should figure it out. Seth, how are you going to get started on this uh, show? What's your, what's your first well, step? Well, I'm going to... Hold on. I'm clearing my memory, and then I'm switching over to After Effects. I'm just watching the status, the progress, almost finish. So... Clever idea. Uh, what are you going to be doing, Hashi, actually, before I talk about what I'm going to be doing? um, I'm still unsure what I'm going to be doing, and would love for the... Uh, I'm loving some ideas of doing something ridiculous uh, for the for the fans, even if it ends up very horrible. Um, but so the Tom Holland to, into Tobey Maguire is pretty fantastic. So <laughs> so chime in now. Uh, if uh, yeah, using Andrew out. Garfield's hands. Oh my God! So <laughs> overly complex. <laughs> he does have the most recognizable hands in Hollywood. <laughs> They're beautiful, yeah. beautiful hands. <laughs> So, um, so I would, I will, I will compile some idea of what I'm doing now and figure that out. And in the meantime, I will probably bug Ryan to talk about the use of visual effects in his work because the, yeah, he, he's made some amazing short films that, that I think are great at world building using visual effects, but not using them for visual effects sake.
front in front of it instead. Oh my uh, gosh. And, then, and then it was just gone. <laughs> so that was great. Uh, but there was like a ghost house. We had this shot where, um, you know, we dolly from one side of the character to the other. The idea being like his switch in that moment, like he's possessed on one when we're on one side, we're him and we're on the other side. He's the possessed version of him now. And and this creature shows up behind him. And <laughs> and uh, Andrew was was helping on on that one. And I sent him uh, Andrew Kramer and I sent him. That was the, the shot, best was just name like, drop. Why? That's why? the right way to name yeah. drop, by the way, you go. <laughs> You say the first name and then you and you start to talk again, but then you just un- subtly, in like in parentheses, say the Real last quick. name. Well, it's like I realized I said Andrew, and people might be like Andrew, who Andrew who? So there you go, Andrew. But uh, but I said it to him, and he was just like, "Why do you, why do you hate me?" Because it was just like <laughs> most of the shot was the camera, the operator, the Dana dolly. Like it was insane. Like it was most of it had to be reconstructed, and because of the nature of the shot, we couldn't really do like a. There was no clean plate to be had, so instead we just got a lot of images of that wall behind, and he had to reconstruct the entire back wall, and then and it's a very darkly lit Ooh. shot, so. It, but he, he nailed it and it ended up great. The other one that was really difficult was for um, <clears throat> ballistic. There's this shot where we, you know, move all the way into the character and we come around her um, and she's leaning up against this car that's quite reflective and it has a lot of dents and dings and, you know, a lot of refraction happening within like, so, you know, the the reflection is morphing over this thing. Um, so that took a lot of time, you know, iteration after iteration, trying to almost there, almost there, you know, you get that ghosting happening where you clearly see something's kind of moving in there. Uh, that one was a pain, but that, you know, I didn't want to, I usually grab safeties. We had a safety for that one where we could just cut in. But for me, that moment was really important pacing wise, a moment to like be drawn into her. So it wasn't like, oh, cool. We took out the camera, kind of like you were saying. It was an important moment for me, given where we were at the story, to have that moment where we're drawn into her. We feel pulled away from her and then we're right inside of, you know, her thoughts. Yeah, this is the one. Um, Oh, that shot. And it was a great moment of. Thanks, man. Yeah. and, And we had this action set piece and we're about to move to this past bit and it's a very different there are two very different things one is this daytime action you know piece the other one is this nighttime thriller it's slower paced you know this is a lot handheld or gimbals the other one's almost entirely locked down uh so you know there's that element too of you know transitioning from the audience from this state of mind to this state of mind um, so that, that moment was a great, you know, it was important to me to use, to connect back with the character in the way that I wanted, but it was also really important to take us to the next moment where we wanted to go. So we couldn't just cut in, you know, it, it just wouldn't work. It would break the flow of the whole thing. Um, but man, those, those two shots were definitely tough as far as reflections go. Well, I will, I will say like, I, first of all, the, yeah, the, the moment is so good. And like watching this as a VFX artist, like knowing that this was chock full of them, this moment I, I was I was with her. I didn't I didn't know no idea at all in fact how tricky this would awesome. have been to film. I hadn't thought of it. I didn't even know until moment. right now awesome. you talking about it. Like I genuinely yeah really? no I didn't. I think you may have told me about this before, but I don't listen when you talk. I only listen when I talk and. Well, yeah, it was no, it was I hadn't even thought about it. But of course, that's how love works. (laughs) I also I I also like it. It uh, good on you for getting in a race because I oh, my God, I'm just the kind of director who's like, no one cares. Look at Jurassic Park. There's reflections everywhere. (laughs) And and like, it's amazing. That's that Kramer was able to paint that out because that shot is just so good. And nothing it never takes me out whatsoever. Uh, thanks, man. Yeah, I, this one was Andy uh, DeVries over oh, at I uh, love Andy. Um, Brute and Stroby. Yeah, and he just, I was like, you magician, which he had done like quite a few shots for us on, on this that were like real tough. Um, but the, this one was just like, man, it was giving us hell. And he spent a decent amount of time reconstructing that and, and oh, making like it Andy. work. Uh, Andrew and team did other stuff. Like they rebuilt the the window behind um, the, the little girl where you see the plane and the explosion. 
Um, and that was real tough. We went through a few iterations of that and it, you know, we we're just having a hard time getting, and Andrew was just like, send it over, we'll fix it. And I'm like, thanks Papa. <laughs> and, and they did and they made it work. Cause that was such a moment. Like, you know, it looked like a visual effect behind her for such a long time. And, you know, I don't think it's 100%, but it's solid. It doesn't take you out of the scene, but previous to that fully taking you out of the scene, cause it was just green screen behind her before outside of the window. <clears throat> because we had to, you know, we had to have the plane and then the explosion happens and then the glass breaks. So the only real was by, you know, putting that green out there. And man, it just, it looked like an effect for so I long hate that. I hate until that. Andrew and his team. Incredible. Yeah. And I was just, I was panicking uh, because it's such an important scene within the film. And then, you know, the, the cast did such a wonderful job uh, performing that scene to build the tension uh, so, I was, you know, like when your cast really went for it and they gave you something great and then it's tech, the technical side isn't, you know, working out and it's pulling away from the work they did. You're like, oh, God, <laughs> you uh, know, oh, so it's like it's, Ryan, I've never felt that before. I've never experienced that in my in my life or career <laughs> or work. No, that is that is 100 percent of my life, man. I, I hate. Uh, yeah. I hate letting every, I hate ruining other people's great work <laughs> with my own. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that that's kind of like the life of a director, right? You're just constantly panicked that you're not going to live up to the great work everyone else <laughs> yeah. did, you know? But you you're just terrified that you know, you're not going to be able to take this thing to the level that everybody's proud of of what they put into so it. So on that shot uh, from what happened what uh what what brought it home because it looks great in the final. Uh, Andrew and his team, man, they, they took it over and you know, it was basically like a, just give it to Papa, Papa, I'll fix it. Don't worry. And you have no idea and what he, he took did. took me in his, his sweet, sweet he did, loving he just arms said, and he made it he work. He just said, you don't want to know how I'm going to do this. And then brought it yeah. back to you <laughs> yeah. covered in blood. I had yeah. to call in all kinds of favors. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like that scene from the town. You can never ask me. <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> We're going to hurt some people. <laughs> it's like, okay, sure. Whose car are we taking? <laughs> so him and, you know, his team took it, Taylor and Dustin over there. Uh, and they just, you know, made the, the key was real tough because of how it all went down. Um, and they were able to just work their magic and, and make it work. And then just getting the right, you know, amount of, dirt and grime and imperfections on that now digital glass. Uh, it's, it's always shocking to me, the things that end up giving you the most difficulty when they seem like they're going to be the most simplistic things, but you can't quite get them right. Cause they're the subtleties of the imperfections of life. And that's mm -hmm. the, the final, you know, 20% that makes something real. Um, and you know, so they spent a lot of time dialing that in and getting to where it just really felt right. And then, you know, pulling off a digital explosion in that way and, you know, to make it feel like it's distant and then a shockwave's coming that breaks the glass. There's a lot of things that are never, I just don't like saying things in my films. I, you know, let them happen and let the audience construct that in their own head. So it's like, how do you pull off that moment to where in the instance, hopefully the audience member isn't like, wait, what just happened and why did the glass break? But they totally get everything that just happened because they saw the plane go overhead. They saw the explosion. They saw, you know, uh, so it was they're a part of that storytelling too because how they work that explosion in how they work the shockwave how exactly the glass breaks um all is a factor in, in telling the story of the moment so it was just it was just a lot of moving parts to make that one tiny thing work so amazing meanwhile when we're shooting i'm just like we'll put the green up and it'll be fine oh yeah oh my <laughs> I, I'm the worst. I've told people constantly my job. My job as a director is just to always tell, is to always like deflate people's like uh, attempt to do great work. Like I'm constantly just like, no, we got to shoot it. Just stop. Stop lighting the scene, Chris. It looks good enough. It's good enough. It's great. <laughs> and I am, I'm also, I would be the worst VFX supervisor because I'm always being my own VFX supervisor, like while directing and like. Right. Chris, my Chris Adams, my director of photography on a lot, a lot of projects, will always turn like, or any DP I work with, like Elizabeth Olmsted, Chris Adams, they'll turn to me and be like, uh, <clears throat> they'll be like, "Are you sure we don't? Do you want tracking markers on the wall?" And I'll be like, "Nah, it's fine." I'm like, "No, nah, it's fine." You know, and <laughs> and I realized I'll figure it out later. I just did a commercial. I shot a, a directed a commercial last week, and I. For the, and I turn and I say, you know what? Actually, could we get a couple C stands and tennis balls? Do we have those on the truck? And they were like, yeah. And after they started setting them up, and then Chris goes, 
Guys, I want you to know that's the first time Seth has ever asked. That's the first VFX <laughs> ask that Seth has ever given He's growing up. on set. And it was like, I can act. I realized uh, it was a pride thing. It was like a. I felt like, no, I want to impress them. I want to impress them that I can do this shot without any tracking markers, without any. Oh, and then future right. me was always like, <clears throat> I hate you, Seth. I hate myself. I hate uh, this career I've chosen. And yeah. I think if we, Seth, could just, uh, if we could just mesh our two things together, that'd be great. Because I need an excellent AD that can crack the whip on me or I'll sit on a shot perfecting it until we've ruined our entire day. <laughs> so I need a really good AD that's like, and you're done here. <laughs> Isaac has that on, on both ghost house and ballistic. Isaac had moments where he, or um, uh, there comes a knocking rather had moments where he's like, okay, man, I'm giving you one last take. And I'm like, <laughs> Thank you. I need somebody you. telling me this. Stop me. <laughs> hey, Michael, you chimed in. Uh, or are, are we, have we, yeah, I was going to say the, the chat is objecting quite strongly to the fact that you reach up with your black watch hand to the mirror and your orange watch hand grabs the mirror. What's wrong Seems with correct. you chat? Why do you have to notice details? Is it because I'm looping it? All, all you have to do, all you have to do is color correct the grabbing hand to be a black band. So it matches your other hand. Mm. And you, you should be fine. Michael, you That'd magnificent work, bastard. That's a brilliant idea. Q <laughs> <clears throat> oh. saturation, pick the orange, drop it down. Anyway, and Hashi, the chat is really wanting to know what you've got going on there. And they want to know if you actually bit your child's neck or if that is VFX. All right. So um, I'm pulling up. Uh, Wait, like what? Seth I is, guess Seth I wasn't is... looking at your <laughs> yeah, So Seth is done over. Who well, over actually, who? Uh, let me wrap up. I'm not done. I'm going to. So I'm going to do the clock, the, the watch. <laughs> Just going to let you guys know what I'll be working on while we trans while we let Hashi actually talk. <laughs> um, I'm going to. Uh, I am going to fix Michael's brilliant. I'm going to fix the watch. Uh, I also feel like I, I also want to add there's the mirror bevel. Um, I. Go just to uh, go a back. Great, a great touch. Yeah, the original. Oh, yeah, scene. do we have? Um, do we do have? Uh, do we have uh, Ken himself talking about this shot? Oh, we do. Yeah. Do we want to? Let's let's. Do we want to watch it real quick? Let, Is that all right? Let's take a brief moment to do that. I think that yeah, it'll be it's okay. educational. I'm gonna turn his clip up. Torment and all of the different things. That's Actually, I'll make it full screen. Here we go. Ready I'm and talk, Ken. She runs up. This is all part of the effect shot. She's running up the stairs. She starts to go slower and slower with a, a device that slows the film down. We had to paint out the shoulder of a camera operator about there. And as she comes up, she opens the mirror, which is all fake. She's blue screened in the foreground so you can uh, so we can match it in beautifully. So really what you're seeing is a camera following her that somehow goes through the mirror to show what's going on here as it closes. The image of the uh, photograph coming in through the glass there, that's all put in later. Even the beveled mirror was a fake. Even the beveled mirror was a fake. Incredible. And what a great, like, speaking of imperfections and things you could add, what a, the, everyone knows that, that mirror, you know, the, yeah. the look of the, the way those beveled mirrors work and that little cheat they did for it made me never question for a second like between that and the little like you know water droplets on there do you think that's just a distortion uh map like a displacement map i think it is just a displacement map the contact dvd has a great breakdown that shows all the elements that went into this and i believe it's just like a displacement strike what? i didn't know that. that okay so what color would what the, would you do you do like gray for the like if i did a gray map for the so yeah or... it's all gray and then you just have a uh, yeah a little a feathered white strut like white stripe that moves across at the same speed. You could even, you know, track it along with your knob or whatever. Don't tell me um, what to do with my knob. Then I'll tell you what to do with your knob. <laughs> so while you start figuring out displacement, I'm going to play this clip over here. Um, so this is um, an action movie kid episode where James has come home late from a baseball game um, saying that he got caught up and I say, whoa, whoa, hold on. Let me see that. And notice this kind of ghastly wound on him. And while you look at this ghastly wound, you're supposed to notice the that's the reveal of the the gag that he has no reflection throughout this. So it was a it was challenging because the the plan was it, it was 
there were several things going into it. I, I wanted to have this nice close up of his wound. I wanted my reflection in the mirror behind. And also my reflection in the mirror couldn't be me filming this. So it also had to be me performing in this take to be matched up with the moment where I recognize that my son is not reflecting in the mirror. So he is obviously, uh, become a vampire. And so, and there are a lot of really yucky cheats, but also right here at the beginning, we have a moment where James is walking into the room and sets his baseball glove down on the table. And right here in the background, the most time I think I spent on this entire shot was that his baseball glove sets down on the table by itself behind him right here. And the only reason I put so much time into it was because YouTube commenters be crazy <laughs> and notice, notice everything, which meant that I needed to have a reflection of me behind his arm setting down this glove and the reflection of the glove matching up with him walking away. Just as a subtle early clue that things are going wrong. So I'm going to talk a little bit about this type of process. It's different, I think, enough than what you're doing, Seth, um, where uh, I'll just try to break this down a little bit. Um, I'm going to see if I can find my uh, Bitch, original place. This amount of work you've done. <laughs> it's, a, it's a stupid amount of work. Let me see. Speaking of Is a stupid the... amount of work, we I would be remiss if we didn't talk about uh, your achievements on social media this week at some point. We can come back to it if we want. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so oh, I, yeah. We... For those who don't know, Apple TV retweeted Hashi today, this Did week. Did you see that, Connolly? I saw that. It's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yes. Yes. Uh, should I take, I'll, I'll take a detour in a second. Uh, what, wait, what is, uh, I'm searching for the original plates that led into this, I'm trying to find them. My thumbnails remember, are too big. I remember you posting this too. <laughs> All right, which is, all right, so it's this one. Somebody says right. content aware Phil. This was pre content aware Phil, wasn't this it? This is pre content aware Phil. Yeah. So, so what I did was effectively the, the contact thing where I filmed it with a green screen there. So I have no context for the reflection at all. So there's James' performance, and there's a this empty mirror the rest of the time. And so because of how much the camera moves, I knew I needed to reconstruct a lot of what would be reflecting back here. I tried to leave this top bit of the mirror exposed, knowing that if I ran a camera track on all of this, if it grabbed some of these details parallaxing right here, I'd be able to have a locator for way back there. So I believe what I did was effectively, uh, I'm going to do a similar version with... Uh, just a new little piece of footage so you can all see it from scratch. So earlier today, I, uh, I shot this little plate with the same uh, mirror. So here's me walking by and obviously <laughs> I'm obviously reflecting in this mirror. So uh, to, to go ahead and remove this, uh, I'm using a different technique because I don't have anything in frame that I need to block out. So I, I just have the mirror as is, which it would be an easy way to do this type of shot, I hope. So I'm going to take my footage and I'm going to run the camera tracker in the background there, which is wonderful. Uh, Seth, what are you working on while my, my I just, camera I just tracking? I just decided I was spending too much time on the watch. I'm going to end up rotoing it and recoloring it. I was trying to use Colorista to like pin down some of the colors, but because I shot it with an iPhone and every the colors are all blurring together, I, I was getting somewhere. It was actually looking pretty good. It wasn't looking too bad. For, for I'm having trouble with the face of it. Like, uh, I, and I just realized I'm spending more time on this watch than I want to. We don't need to worry about the face because reflection only shows the band. Your hand covers up the rest of it, I think. Michael, you're not allowed to talk for the next 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. We need you. Please time talk. out. 
Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna instead focus on that bevel, and then I'm gonna focus on putting a, a texture on this mirror and try to clean up the edges because the edges look like the cloth. That's delightful. H Hashi, on on your shot, I'm kind of curious. Did you do like a um? A reference pass of the mirror like go through the same shot without the green screen on the mirror just to get a reference of the room um somewhat i kind of knew about how far away it looked i'm i'm sure i must have filmed something without the uh green there but i have a feeling that knowing me i probably greened the mirror first and was like i'm a genius this would be great <laughs> and then realized you know it, much later that I needed something oh, like that. Feeling. So what I, I think Very for cool. that original shot, it's going to be one of, it's probably one of these. Um, I filmed, let's see. So now that. So I filmed, I think my performance in the static plate right here, coming in and looking and reacting. And luckily the original shot has so much, the mirror is so much in the background that from this point here, you don't notice a lot of parallax relative to me and the background. So I can use a still plate for that. What got complicated was that when I stand up here, the camera pans down and like, <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. This is really <laughs> weird. <laughs> I got a weird, I got a weird pirate leg. That's 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 what my legs look like. That's why I never show them on camera. But um, I think I needed to take this the performance take of me, which is down here. And I think when I stand up, there's a little bit of my shorts, but not much, and definitely not enough of the ground that end up getting shown uh, in the original downward and reflected once I got to this point. So I do remember there was a lot of building out a large reflection plate somewhat based on the angle that I thought it would be reflecting at. I mean, yeah, you can you, see right here. You had here. to do a shorts pass. Yeah, there's a very yeah, rough uh, feathered line right there, but I was trying to count on the camera blur covering up that railing getting broken up. There's, there's a lot to pick apart. For sure, but um, I think overall, if the shock is like, oh, the kid's bleeding, that's weird. <laughs> uh, then uh, hopefully the, you forgive a lot. But this part is pretty unforgivable. Because <laughs> that's noticeable <laughs> in motion. Too. No, nobody cares or notices. It's just it's it's just Treasure <laughs> Planet now. It's fine. It, yes. I, I think our Treasure Planet call out, by the way, earlier was off, off, was off mic. I know. I know. Let's not even explain. No, that was a callback. It it? Treasure Planet needs. Anytime no I say a, anytime I refer to After Effects as AE, I immediately think of Titan AE. Does anybody else do that too? Uh -huh. yeah, yes, 100%. absolutely. Oh, yeah. you guys are sweet to also reference Titan <laughs> AE for me. <laughs> We're just being nice to you, so you don't feel oh, weird. Thank God. Um. <laughs> All right, so let's do the super fast version of this. I camera tracked this. I grabbed three points from the frame of this, and so now I should have a nice little thing, uh, yeah, right there on the mirror, which is nice. I'm going to run the normalized track script available at workbench.tv. Uh, I've renamed my wall layer wall, and when I press that, it's going to make it so any new 3D object I put in will be perfectly aligned with this mirror, which is really cool. Um, I'm also going to watch my camera tracker and see, like, hey, did it grab something in the background so I can kind of extract some parallax from that? Because it's basically a virtual space, a, a mirror. It's a, a reflection is just effectively like having a deeper room. So I'm going to create another solid back here. And because I've already run my normalized track script, I can just press this plus button to add it to my very normalized scene. And now as I play through, I have, I'll have a locator for the mirror and a locator for where the, that background detail of stuff is. So I have two pieces of information that can really help me figure out how to start erasing myself while preserving the foreground. So that's what I'm going to do, starting with this, uh, this little oval mask. So the chat is excited. When I say the chat, I mean Stu, that you're adding the green screen in post. <laughs> 
<laughs> and the, I know someone else who did that once, and Stu gave him a hard time about it. Arn Rabinowitz did a great tutorial one time where he was actually inspired by Action Movie Kid, and he did a oh my God. he did a shot of his son being abducted by aliens. There's a red giant tutorial for it, like abducted into a spaceship. And he had added the green screen. For some reason, he had done that. And Stu was the one who was like, there's something horrible and twisted about adding a green screen in post, but I understand why you did it. <laughs> oh, that is delightful. I didn't know he did it for that one. That's perfect. Now, Ryan, um, someone in the chat a while back, and I, we haven't had time to get to it, was wondering about the drone in Sentinel from Film Riot. Can you talk a little bit about how you made that? If you uh, have a chance? Yeah. Be friends with Andrew. <laughs> I knew it was coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Andrew. Andrew handled that one as well. He kit bashed it from a bunch of stuff, so we had like a sort of unique uh, look. But he handled that, and then it was just a matter of um, to really sell it. I think you really have to consider what that end result is going to be, and you have to, in the moment, imagine that thing actually there and treat it as such. So when we shot it. Um, I just shot it like I would if we had that physical thing there. So it was all handheld. It was, you know, making sure we had foreground elements um, to try to really sell it because it's also a very sort of kinetic forward moving sort of piece. It's one where there was no script for that short film. It was one where I just kind of wanted to test showing up with a bullet point of guy wakes up drone this happens it'll probably end like this but let's see when we get there um hadn't really looked at the location before time we just showed up and and we did it in a day um so that was kind of a, a part of the whole thing is <clears throat> building something that felt like it had a strong forward continuous momentum to where it was just really this action piece um and then my idea for just selling that drone was shooting it um without since I wasn't the one doing the visual effects without caring, you know, how that would have to happen later. I mean, you know, knowing, you know, what, okay, that's not going to work at all. This is going to make it so hard that it's actually going to look bad. So keeping away from those things, but shooting it in a way that made it maybe a little bit more difficult, but you know, in the end, just, it, it just glues it all together, you know, so well, I think with just how the thing is shot. Yeah, the, and the, the animation on it is spectacular. Yeah. Uh, airborne objects are remarkably hard to sell the weight and momentum of properly. Because yes. otherwise they're they not really moving. They really have to work with the face. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, that and that's thing, just all Andrew. Yeah, it's so good, the animation on that. It feels weighty. I believe it's there. All those things. Yeah. He's, he's yet another person that I just wish I could space jam their talents out of. Like I said <laughs> to you guys on text the other day, I wish I could just space jam your talents. Just ring that out into... Just, yeah. yeah. Uh, the chat is also asking uh, Mr. Connolly, since you seem to do chat, is Andrew Kramer alive? Because he seems to have gone quite silent on video call. He always does. He's, he's finishing about he 20 is, million yeah. things that are all amazing. And the, the yeah, pretty much whenever Andrew goes quiet, you're like, well, in in, in a few months he's going to show up again with something that knocks everyone's socks oh, off. Like what, really ha guys. what also happens with Kramer? His VFX factory. Yes, a hundred percent. If and you go visit <laughs> Kramer, and it's like that. It's like the Willy Wonka's factory, where like you could die. You could end up like <laughs> fall. Like like yeah, he he is consistently like demoed and shown each of us like some amazing product that is like about to be ready to go. And then he gets an amazing idea that honestly like takes it a whole step further. And then he spends another yeah. year <laughs> turning it into that. And it's just like, uh, it's all very exciting. <laughs> you bastard. I know. Yeah. But you know, when he, whenever he's hiding in his uh, creative cave, eventually he will emerge with something insane. The last time was that th uh, right thx thing that that he did that huge animation that was yeah because that which yeah. was unreal that, but that was like oh, man was, are you all, I'm so texting beautiful. him like you good yeah. bro like you that was amazing and then a couple months later it was that was in the works for several years like on and off I know because my uh, Robbie Stambler who uh, did the sound design on that also did the sound design on dark on my darker color short um, yeah. and he uh, he was saying <laughs> yeah. He was saying that was like an on and off project for a while. And then suddenly Kramer was like, I'm done. 
<laughs> and they like mixed it and finished it and sent it out. And it's like one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, that's insane. Um, so cool. All right. I think I see a question in the chat about uh, content aware fill and how it would work in a shot like this. So I'm going to I'm going to try that. I want to see what it would do. My instinct is that it will not do a great job specifically because it's looking for motion vectors. And when if I imagine um, motion vectors are basically if you took every pixel and tried to just guess based on its brightness or luminance value where it's going to be on the next frame and where it came from the frame before and making a sort of a map that overlays on top of your video. And that can give you an idea of where are things moving? Are things moving left or right? And based on that, I can displace pixels that are not in the empty space in the same direction that everything else in that relative space is working. But I have found that Content Aware Fill has a lot of trouble when you have something like my mirror frame, which is moving to the right, and me moving to the left, sort of in sync with the background in just sort of an odd way. So I'm going to run it just so everyone can see what will happen. Um, and then uh, after that, we'll do it uh, probably the old fashioned way. So uh, the way I always like to use content aware fill is uh, just throw in a solid something like this and uh, just draw a nice little garbage mat around the offending uh, piece. So I think I can just do this and I'll add a few mask keyframes. I don't think it will take much. There we go. I'll move that over there. Uh, um, doop, doop. All right, I think I'm kind of contained within the mask. Contained within the mask. Contained within the mask. Then, contained within the mask. Uh, <laughs> so I think because of the way this camera move works, if I'm thinking like a computer, I'm looking to see if the background is visible. The backgrounds that I'm about to obscure are visible on other frames. Now here is the beginning of this little like, craft shelf thing we have. And then I'm obscuring it and the table. And by the time I clear to here, there's not a lot of info ever on screen of what is behind this one specific area. And it's because I'm rotating counter to the movement, which is like just putting me right in the center of all this stuff. So it's a little bit weird. So um, I am going to Content Aware Fill might work if I can add a clean reference frame somewhere here in the middle. So let's try to give it the best shot possible, which is I'll turn on my frame, and then I'll turn on this um, green solid. And this green solid I'm going to convert into a, uh, what is it, silhouette alpha? There we go. So now if you can imagine what's happening is I have that green solid punching me out from the original footage, and then I have the sort of preserved uh, foreground rim of that mirror here in the foreground. And now maybe if I come to this middle frame here, I can grab something that I fortunately decided to grab, which was a reference plate. So I think uh, I shot two versions. One was just putting the camera up against the actual mirror to sort of see um what like what the reflection probably was so i have this nice full image like that and the other thing i filmed was a a pass where i kind of uh tried reaching my arm into the uh, reflection so and just moving it around a little bit moving to the other side and trying to get from the other side a less obscured version of this background and honestly this will probably work best to help rebuild my reflection more than anything. So I'll start with uh, trying to maybe stitch this frame. I'll just save it. I'd rather work in Photoshop to stitch these together. Uh, let's render this out to here. Render that frame. And then we'll render a frame a little bit later where you can see the other half of that table. Uh, there we go. Cool. So I'm going to open Photoshop and start stitching some stuff. 
Seth, how are you doing over uh, there? I've got... Well, he's doing a great job keying the screen, and the chat is talking about how he's getting such a good key out of such a wrinkly green Primate screen. Primate here. And Red Giant helps the, yeah, Primate, Primate here, here. my dude. It's uh, pretty incredible. It, it does trick is these edges. Like, do they... Yeah. What was that? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, green green screens needing to be clean thing of the past. Thing of the past. That's that well, Red Giant is partly what is things like Primate is partly what's made me be like, I don't need tracking markers. I don't need a flat green screen. I don't need no. uh, you know. What 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 needs to be a thing in the past? Uh, clean, clean green smooth screens. Smooth green screens. Uh, a good, Probably not true, but uh. <laughs> uh, I I can do some more clean. I need to do some more cleanup on the composite. I also want to try and uh, see if I can do some repositioning to make the hands stay lined up as they move. But I've I the bevel. There's like so much like dirt going on with the with the key right now that I can't properly judge the bevel. But I'm curious. It it Ooh. feels like it needs to be more than what it is. Oh God! <laughs> that isn't that everyone, yes. Seth. I feel like I need to be more than what I am. Uh, let me clean up this key a little more. All right. So what I'm going to do in the background here is, like. just out of curiosity, I'm going to crop these two images, the two the two stills I just output, and I'm going to try running photo merge in. At, in a Photoshop on them, I don't know what will happen. Uh, let's see, automate, right? Uh, I think, photo merge. Ryan, you're a director. Ah. How does this bevel I look? Am. Would you? What would you do to this bevel? Uh, oh, I just asked you, and then I just thought of something. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> continue. But, but please continue. The, well, here's what I remember. The VFX. Artist director relationship. Look, look at this. Oh, yes. This bevel, it's actually vertical. It's not horizontal. I, I was doing it horizontal because in my head, it's like the bevel is a, is a, is a it's, it's, I don't, I don't know. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, you get it. Maybe not, but I actually need to be doing it on the <laughs> vertical, like, uh, to honor the source material. I mean, I'm I'm just kind of like watching this as a class, to be honest with you. <laughs> oh God! Well, you're. I'm so I'm so interested. Then there will be a test. Uh, is that is that uh, bevel good enough? Click. It's looking hey, good. In to, motion, I, I have, bet that's going to look pretty good. Yeah, it's on kind of a smaller screen for me, but yeah, uh, yeah, it's looking pretty solid. I need need to fill in the spots toward the top. Oh, I'm Photoshop couldn't automatically do it. Oh, which now means I'm just gonna need you to add a, a, a 3D wood frame and handle to that, Seth. Uh, <laughs> it won't be 3D, and I can't do a handle because there was no handle on my mirror. That would make no sense. But <laughs> hey, how do I help me out, guys? You experts, how do I get this? Uh, you see, I've got the displacement, like pulling things down. Is there something I can check to make that? Oh, like that. To make it. Never mind. It, <laughs> yep. I like how you keep asking questions and then answering them for yourself. That's honestly, dude. That's everything. It's isn't it half the times that we get you and I get on a phone call where I'm like, I, I'm like, I just I'm screwed. Let me tell you this idea and why it's bad. And I start explaining it, and then as I'm explaining it to you out loud, I realize like I feel like we've both done this regularly. Hey, it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's the story of our <laughs> lives. It's kind of the way of things. You just need to say something out loud. Yeah. Oh God. See, that doesn't look like it's enough. Incredible. This is my problem as a VFX artist. I'm like, it's not enough. I need to crank it to 28. No, 000. it is. It's perfect. The, the only thing that you could add on top of this would be some grime on that mirror. To, hey, great idea. To, to, to kind of fog you out. Well, so by the way, this is my displacement map I'm working with. I used King pin tracker to, uh, very easily track the, surface to the mail me go to quarter resolution and turn off motion blur to track uh i used a grid um boy fake let me see i did uh whoop. in the meantime i'm doing a very simple trick of 
instead of stitching those things together and stuff, I'm just going to grab the still that I took of this room. It looks uh, it looks a reasonable amount like it. And I'm going to see if uh, if I feather masked this in, uh, how how good it looks. I've made it a 3D <laughs> layer. I can place it behind the uh, original uh, framed footage kind of like this. And uh, let me see if I make it semi-transparent what kind of what we got okay make it semi-transparent and i'll try to line it up with the actual background what do we have we've got this around here the only thing i'm sort of matching up is the rough z depth but my perspective and everything is going to be completely wrong but i bet it'll fool you fool me Hachi. okay fool me hard so so right now Look, already we got something pretty good. Like if you, if I'm just swiping through this, what? It's pretty reasonable. So, sorry, I all just we need every now and now, then I'll look over at Hashi's side of the screen and real and be I like know. and be angry, just freaking angry. <laughs> just damn it. So the reason I'm getting all this for free is because I had that one little blue uh, 3D marker that I tracked back here, so I know the position of how deep this section of the image is. How deep. And now I am trying to just add a little bit of feather mask to this thing. I probably don't even need my me to be cut out from here. I can just... Uh, I'll try to align my masking points with contours in the image. If you can ever do that, then it uh, there's already naturally a visual break wherever they're happening. Oh, so I'm moving the, the wrong uh, mask points. Hashi, JC Tecklenburg is wanting you hey, to, JC. To, JC. Wants you to use difference mode. Wanting me to use what? He wants you to use the difference mode. The difference mode. I don't. Ooh. <laughs> is that a no? Well, to, uh, I, I'm not sure what he means to, to show. Well, hopefully to show, to show how aligned I am. His question in the chat. <clears throat> JC, is that for the sake of me aligning this uh, this three D card? I think a uh, to... did something with drones where they they use some like difference for it to pick out which had drones and which didn't to remove the drones from it. That's probably what he's referencing. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, yeah. I'm... Corridor, <laughs> corridor <laughs> again. They're everywhere. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go with uh, let's see. I'm gonna have to figure this out because my reflection will have to have some point where it cuts off, and there's gonna be an obvious seam because it's not a real reflection. It's a it's a cheat. Uh, you might be wondering where I'm getting these glass textures, and that's why Michael is gonna drop this link in the chat. Michael found these textures, and uh, they're for academic use only. So learn from this, everyone. Learn. 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 All right. You know what? This is this is feathered into place, and I think that's pretty good. <laughs> JC says yes for alignment was his reason. Ah, okay. Yes, the Red Giant has dropped that link in the chat. The that is from Columbia University. They have done a lot of research in a lot of different things, and specifically they've done a bunch of dirt scans and stuff that are very handy for adding, you know. Imperfections to think. Imperfections again, in the skin. It is for academic use only. No selling stuff. <laughs> uh, sorry, I just spoke over yeah. you with a Jurassic Park you, reference. You can't, a very can't, weird one. <laughs> you can't yeah. can't walk past a, <laughs> a Jurassic it's... Park reference. All right. So so yeah, difference mode. I, I've never really used that to try to align things. That's a that's a clever idea. Spe like if you're using especially a a lockdown plate, you get a great result for that. Um, so looking at this, some of the obvious things, and I mean, even at normal blending mode, I can tell like my worst sections are things like this. Um, and you could you could labor over them or you could not care, which is usually what, what I do. <laughs> um, but the other thing you could do is just add a, uh, a little uh, mesh warp or something like that. Liquify or a mesh warp. And I'm just going to grab this point right here. Bring it up so it aligns, and uh, this point so it kind of aligns. Kind of aligns. Let's try to stretch out the a little. Magic carpet there. 
Actually, I'll, I'll see if my, uh, see how mad this is if I use liquify instead. Liquify feels more uh, arty, you know? Because I can grab the brush here. <laughs> the pro spot. tip, liquify feels more <laughs> arty. <laughs> Come, like, bring you up a little bit. You know what? Now mesh warp was the way to go. Though now this is kind of done. I don't know. <laughs> That was the obvious uh, seam to me was that rug right there. So if the rug seam isn't there, this seam I can't see. Mostly because of just clutter back there, which is another pro tip is if you leave your house cluttery, then you can you have a lot of hiding options. Uh, my reflection stretches out weird right there. Rob on guitar NZ, which I assume is New Zealand, says have some Jack Daniels and the imperfections will become perfect, at least temporarily. <laughs> I don't think. I the like game, this VFX tip. Yeah. The game hacker is talking about using a difference mat. If you have a clip of someone dancing and you have a background footage without the person, you can create a mat of the person, like isolating them, which you can do if you have a high enough color resolution in your image. Most smartphone, well, all smartphones and mm -hmm. most even prosumer cameras shoot with very compressed color space. Um, mm -hmm. So instead of having 444, uh, you have 422 or 420. Or four one one, or some other very compressed in most of the color channels. So there's a lot of noise in the red and blue usually, uh, which means there's too much noise for a difference mat to actually work well. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why and, tools like Rotobrush version 2.0 and After Effects are so handy because they they work without relying on the highly compressed noise that's there. Absolutely. And I would I would say that yeah, a difference mat could be an in interesting way to try to pull a key, but again, it requires you to have a either a, a like a move matched camera rig if you want any motion or a locked off camera. Uh, for all of Action Movie Kid, there there is no locked off shots or tripod things because the I want the aesthetic to specifically be. Uh, to look like it was captured by a real camera. So for example, with this, the only way to use a difference mat to eliminate me from this would be if I were able to film the, you know, the background plate. Uh, like, I don't actually know how a difference mat could help in this case. Maybe I'm, I'm ignoring something obvious. No, but... you would need a motion control rig for it to work. Now, Seth, did you work with a motion control rig on Old New? Uh, I did. Old New? Um, uh, Ryan Connolly. What? Do you remember yes, what that was? Yes, it was the uh, Kessler Cinedrive system. Ryan Connolly um, actually connected me with uh, Kessler and their amazing... I get the Cinedrive and, like, what was the, what's the name of the long shuttle uh, rails that they had, Connolly? Uh, the shuttle dolly. Shuttle dolly. And you could rig that with the Cinedrive, and it was it's primarily for... Uh, time lapses um but i immediately was like i hear motion control and i'm like back to the future part two done clones yeah and so old new all of the clone shots uh were done with um with that uh oh, and man. there's a funny clip online somewhere it's actually in the old new behind the scenes where i was i had just set it up the center drive for the first time and i was testing it out and my son, who was very little at the time, is in the garage. Like he's doing like ninja moves in front of the camera, and then he accidentally kicks it, and he makes this amazing priceless face. Uh, <laughs> I highly recommend watching that behind the scenes just for that clip. My same son who shot, who is now old enough and now a middle schooler, and shot these plates for me uh, for this Crazy. test. Yeah, the oh. cin the Cine drive has come a long way too. Um, another f mutual friend of ours was doing a, a commercial and working with the team that did the motion control for Children of Men. That oh, he showed. I know who you're talking shot. about, and he showed me that, and it was amazing. He yeah, put it in the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh huh. But they they couldn't they couldn't cut the roof off the car. They couldn't you know they couldn't damage the car in any way. And the motion control rig was so huge, and and there so there was just a lot of difficulty there. So he was like, what? What do you think? I'm like, yeah, I, I think you could do it with the Cine Drive now, like with the stuff that they they have, yeah. which is like, it's definitely pro, but it's accessible to you know people who don't have children of men dollars, <laughs> you know, and that's what they <laughs> used, and it, and it worked. It worked really, it worked, it worked really well. So it's just crazy that motion control rigs that could pull off something to that scale is now accessible to people. I guess it's just nuts. Totally Gosh. Nuts. So. 
Let's see. This all reminded me. I know I'm going off track here, but to summarize, the way we removed me from this, uh, from the background of this shot, was just taking a not even that well aligned 3D card of the background. It upsets me how easily you did this <laughs> of the camera yep. and the the mirror tracked in front of it. I mean, the the simple simpler the better for me because people aren't going to pay attention. I could grab uh i could easily grab some grunge and throw it on that mirror right in the middle and that would sell it extra um so there's one fun thing uh i have another uh fun couple of videos that this discussion was reminding me of this has become our <laughs> um this is but this was uh, right at the beginning of lockdown when we were kind of uh frustrated with having to do all of our homework at home we decided to have to do a couple of videos that just explore the idea of uh, when your classmates aren't there to help you, you can get help from yourself. So this was one attempt at um, a very. There are some some obvious issues. There's a James arm clips his other arm right here, very like very uh, a little Kylie Minogue video ish, <laughs> but. Um, so good. But otherwise, what I what I liked about it was using a handheld camera to try to tie their motion together. And then there's an, an I tried an even more complex version of this, which was, I mean, watching it, scrutinizing it is difficult. But I but I tried to do something equivalent to a match move kind of shot without having the ability to have a match move rig, which just means a lot of. A lot of work and and thinking about how something like this could work. Did you just run that shot twice and then line it up? How how did you pull that I, off? I basically I tried filming with like planting my feet in kind of two similar places and like memorizing about what I did. Um, but this plate with James and his legs out is the is the primary plate behind all of this. And then James in the foreground is rotored out like the entire way through. But I tried to do the first camera move with a bit of wobble and like organic stuff going on. And then when I filmed a plate of James in about the same location, um, I tried to do a, a hyper smooth version of it for myself. And there's actually a little bit of floatiness right here. But... Uh, when I did, I think there may have been something on the ground or something that I use as a reference point to try to stabilize and get some version of, uh, let's see, I wonder if I have any of the, uh, did you just add the shadows out. back in digitally? Um, I think I tried to feather mask them back in and they worked out pretty well that way. Yeah, they look good. See. Oh, you know what? I think I actually had, um, Oh, now I'm confusing myself. I'm, I, I just saw a couple of clips of my footage, and I now I don't remember what was happening. Wait, wait. You just have twins, and you're lying to us. <laughs> <laughs> it's the yeah, it's the prestige One of the best fake VFX shot ever. Oh yeah, look I did. at this I fake match photo. move I did, guys. Oh my god, it's the prestige, so, but as a bad the, parent instead. But it, yeah, it sucks for them because they can only ever be out one at a time. That also would not hold up. Your kids would lie immediately. Immediately. <laughs> I mean, I can't tell the truth immediately. Sorry. They would not be able to hold up. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So to answer Caleb's question, yeah, Caleb and Natal in the chat, everybody, uh, we uh, yeah. have uh, – there was – there. almost every bit of this I tried uh, stabilizing – tracking and rematching the move i forgot that the plate of james here um looking at this first frame i realized i must have had my daughter stand in so because she's casting a bit of soft shadow on his shoulder there moving around and i think the lighting changed when there wasn't someone in frame there so it was just a lot of weird having to take the uh original plate and scoot it around and taking Original play. Footage. Oh yeah, I got him. Here we go. 
This is the Back to the Future detour, and it's all okay because we're all under the Zemeckis umbrella. <laughs> Zemeckis umbrella. <laughs> it's the name of my production company. Yeah. <laughs> the <new> Zemeckis umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> If you wanted to really tie it in with a completely separate thing, it could be the Zemeckis Umbrella Corporation. That'd be a <laughs> heck of a crossover episode. Oh my gosh, I love that. So, hey, which was the... So yeah, so here's the plate of James doing this. And then I event, once I had shot the other plate with uh, him being uh, with sort of the same move, this is what I had. So, oh, whoops, no, that's the, uh, that's the actual render. Where's the... Uh, perfect yeah so this is how well <laughs> this this worked to begin with to, sh to, to show people the uh, the stupid amount of it's kind of a cool hobbit effect right there <laughs> he's huge <laughs> <laughs> settles into place so i think it was honestly just trying to take these two things and hoping that i could get you know a through a ton of keyframing. I think what I did was I probably parented this James to the original plate that he came from. So I also had other reference markers like the corner of this couch. I remember being a big one uh, that was in both pieces of footage. So I kept on lining up that corner with the other corner. So his shoulder would stay at the same spot relative. I don't, I'm not setting keyframes. I'm just I'm <laughs> messing this up anyway. Weird, weird detour there. Um, and so, what a uh, fun detour! What a fun detour! It's the you know, it's a Mechus hour. So, Mechus hour, it's happening to Seth. You. What progress has happened over on your Zemeckis show? Oh, god. Um, <laughs> I, I, I've just been messing with it into oblivion too much, probably, to be totally honest. Uh, it's the best way to finish a shot is to overdo it a bunch and then like and start deleting key go frames. back three versions before you <laughs> yeah. added stuff and going oh yeah that was better. So I'm trying to think through right now. Oh, I can already tell something that weird that's going on that shouldn't be. Okay, uh, I'm trying to think of how to clean up these edges with this key, and the problem is, I just need to draw a mask, but I want to keep my hand. Uh, I'm just trying to think of. How to clean up these edges. These edges are way too clothy and rough. Um, here's where I'm at at the moment. Oh, it's going to render at full resolution. Hang on. We'll just let it play while... Ah! <laughs> Why don't I do quarter resolution? <laughs> This is the most valuable Ryan Conway's time has been I know. spent in so, weeks. Something happened here with the scale. It's just a master class that I'm attending, and I enjoy it completely. <laughs> All right. I, I see in the chat people are asking about Roy Kent, so maybe I'll pull up Roy Kent. That's what people are here for. Anyway, so that's where I'm at right yeah. now. What You guys pick it apart. Well, Ryan, you're, that... you're a director. Pick it apart. I think it looks pretty good, man. No, it doesn't. You're lying to me. This bothers me. I think a ton. I, there's something going on with the um, with the overlay of like the grime on the window. Uh, how bad it looks? Too much. Yeah. yeah. Cir Circle feather it out oh, around your face. And it would hat. be. It would also be blurry. Depth of field, right? I mean, I guess not on the iPhone. It mm -hmm. would be, but. Um. It always makes me upset because I shoot everything on iPhone and I'm like, I can't, I don't get to use depth, depth of field, field yeah, as a sheet for no. anything. It's... Well, I'll set it at 50% opacity. Still feels like, still feels like. That looked good to me from that side. Still feels like it should be harder to see through. The, and I actually think, so I can't scale up my foreground hand right now. I have to, because of the way I have these like displacement maps and pre-comps going, I can't mess with the foreground, but like uh, scale and tra transformation wise, but I can rescale the background and then like, and then I, I have a transform 
uh, transform on a adjustment layer on top of everything where I can rescale it back up if I don't like the way the reptile uh, tiling is looking on the top. So, I uh, because Seth is saying to use your grunge as a mat for a blurred version of the background, blurred and uh, de uh, contrasted, I assume. Yes, that actually, I had just, I was just about to try that. Uh, I was going to duplicate my displacement map. It's exactly there. what I was about to say. It's just, uh, it's just to, um, not blur it, but just like decontrast it and stuff, right? Did I lose you guys? Are we all dead? I died. No, <laughs> live. I'm I'm here. I was just answering the chat. The game hacker was keep has advocated a number of times for you to use advanced spill suppressor, and I was pointing out that there is no color spill there. That's the problem. It's all gray. Um, I assume you ticked on spill killer in Primat. It's it's the fact that it's too dark and spill advanced spill killer won't really help with that as much as probably we would hope. Yeah, guys. Oh, I know what to do. Good God. I'm pretty sure this isn't linked to anything. I can just pre-comp this and use it as an adjustment layer. Boop. Uh, wait, what am I doing? I don't need... <laughs> what have you discovered? I don't need the adjustment. How disappointed you are in yourself God. right now. <laughs> well, just it's just going. what's happened again is like, okay, I'll come back to the, the larger <laughs> macro to self disappointment that's going on. But the, the, the micro is that I'm trying to blur, like I'm trying to uh, like, you know, lower the contrast a bit here in the, once we become reflection world to try and make it feel more reflectiony. And I don't need it to be, I don't need this adjustment layer to be contained to the mirror because it's going to go underneath the foreground layer. Okay. Just to, now I'm having to explain why I'm an idiot and it's making me feel even worse. <laughs> I'm just going to do a new adjustment layer and I'm going to put it underneath the, the, uh, be the key foreground and I'm going to do some curves and what do you think? Should I just like turn up the blacks a little bit like that and then keyframe it to come on 12. Oh, oh no, <laughs> my mic just fell off. <laughs> I'm going to have to do the rest of the thing holding it like this. <laughs> oh, really? Like a DJ? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My mic is just sleepy. You okay, buddy? What's going on, Mike? You know what? It... And now it's like legit falling off my desk. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> and you're hearing like my my uh, my chair as well. <laughs> I, that that chair sounds like children talking. And I actually when. When you were on my other podcast, the like I remember thinking like he's got a kid nearby, doesn't he? And I'm realizing now it was your chair, a hundred percent, just it's, squeaking. I tried WD forty on it. I just need to like stop being lazy and get a new chair. But then like you gotta put it together. And Did I you just try it on your wanna. kids? WD forty. Hashi, I think you're muted. Oh no, I oh, am yeah, muted. He yeah. does this every I now and then. I gotta get thing to fix my <laughs> mic. <laughs> Oh, man. Amazing. So speaking of having technical difficulties with your chair, uh, Roy Kent from Ted Lasso. Oh that, that's a long walk. I hope you follow me in that one. All right. Uh, so Ted Lasso, uh, wonderfully uplifting, fun, light show. Uh, I, I'm in love with it. Um, yep. But uh, there, I caught wind of uh, this conspiracy theory um, if you'd like to call it that, that the actor Brett Goldstein, who portrays Roy Kent, a, a grizzled and, uh, uh, you know, very, uh, very gruff, but also very wise uh, soccer player, that he was entirely a CG creation. 
And uh, I think this was uh, this got announced, um, or at least it got some traction around the time that um, Brett was nominated. Is it for? Uh, is it Emmy? I don't know what time of year we're in right now. Um, <laughs> you live in but, LA, so your seasons are known by award shows and not by well, and not by actual. I, like the billboards would let me know, but I haven't been outside of my house in two years, so <laughs> it, I just. <laughs> so, um, so I decided like what better time than to add fuel to the fire by, um, releasing this, which was a bit of an homage to, uh, the leaked Spider-Man trailer that came out, which is a very obviously labeled, uh, watermarked copy of, uh, it's also me. a great way to give yourself, to make to give yourself credit on something that's going to go viral. I, I loved I love both functions of that. So I left (laughs) my name as a giant watermark, just like in that, that poor, uh, the Spider-Man trailer situation. Um, And some uh, do not copy logo and a slightly cut off time code here just to make it, to make it feel authentic, even though I don't know why there would be time code and stuff on a VFX breakdown per se, but it it kind of (laughs) works. So, for, so to come up with this, I ended up coming up with multiple fake looks of Roy Kent, kind of taking him backwards to a CG version. And they're doing something outside, which uh, I'm sure is exciting. Um, so yeah, but let me see if I can play through these. We got... Uh, we'll just assume it's Ryan's chair. Yes. So we came up with uh, different stages of... Brett to kind of make him look like he is uh, coming together uh, as a CG model, starting with the uh, very washed out, you know, bodiless version to a completely hairless version, beard and then hair and color kind of all matched in together. So for this, I was at first I was just going to do something like track motion dots and a motion capture helmet rig to him in original shots and that was my original idea and then i for the head tracking i was wondering if there was any way to do it as simply as you can on uh an iphone and came across um uh lens studio which is a uh, snapchat filter maker so let me see if i can uh pull that over here so Lens Studio, I believe, is completely free, and it's designed for you to be able to create um, different uh, Snapchat lenses, obviously. So see, it's all a little bit docked, so I'm trying to fit it on this half screen. Uh, you can feed it a sample movie to run your face filters on. This was my test to see if I could get this full mesh body to line up with him. did not work that well. Um, so I then, uh, went with, I think one of their default, um, let me see if I can, oh, I'm just trying to uncheck some stuff. Where are you? I just tried to figure out how this, how this works. So I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, I don't know why I can't do my wife. Wa- my wife do. just texted me. She's watching the show somewhere. She said, you're wearing two different watches. She just, for those just <laughs> tuning in, I'm wearing two different watches uh, at the same time. Uh, yeah, I am. So yes, God. not right now. <laughs> he's got, he's got. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Seth's different watches are why we always start the show on time. Yes, always. Oh, okay. Always. <laughs> I got it. Both sides. I am right the timekeeper. Oh my god. I'm so cool. <laughs> All right. Well, oh. I guess I better fix that watch now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so long story short over here. Uh, I went viral. I only wear one watch. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. I I applied um, 
Snapchat filter. This is actually to, awesome. To to the original, and uh, moved it backwards. I did some content aware fill action on his shirt at that point, and Roto brushed this character, so I was able to uh, basically do something that looked like a full uh, reconstruction of Brett. So here is sort of my here are a bunch of my layers. I I was so in the weeds with this comp by the end really appreciate the the, the noise outside <laughs> um but it's like it's the scene from fargo happening right outside your yeah. window and you're real relaxed about it <laughs> it is you can yes, dice it, 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 it is a later. it is a grinder outside hashi's house just like in fargo uh, it, they are getting rid of some people getting rid of old trees and stuff all those, all those so, cool yeah, kids this, you have. That's dark. <laughs> it's it, every every video. It, it's it's the worst part for me is that is that you have to get rid of the the clone. Otherwise, Clean you know, up. people ask too many questions. But I, I kept the original. Everyone, Just settle down. <laughs> it's not that dark. It's fine. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Are there any specific questions? This is I had I had a lot of how, versions of uh, how many Roy hours yeah, went into I, I do. What's I wrong with you? What? Uh... Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, if I had an answer for that, what the best part of this was that I did this. I, I try to wake up and get to my desk early if I want to do something stupid, <laughs> because then. Because I am the exact opposite. Can... That's so funny. I if I want to do real work, I have to get up early. And for you, it's oh my god, that's so good. Because and otherwise, like I'll need to admit what I was doing during a work day and right. stuff. And so I try to do all of my work between like six and eight, so I can do this. And once you know, I realize that, that because it's recorded. Or because what? It's true. Yeah, if Maxon is watching. <laughs> this is why yeah. we do a live show, Ryan, is so they can see on a weekday for at least two hours, Hashi and I are doing our job. <laughs> so, so yeah, honestly, I wrote a brushed the character, uh, which worked very easily, and then uh, also just ran Snapchat on uh, to get multiple versions of the head tracked them in and then just did a little bit of keyframing so they kind of pop on or off. And so this is a this is a remarkably simple thing to do and uh, is a good way to add uh, you know add credence to the theory that uh, poor Brett doesn't exist and isn't giving an amazing performance. Did you track a motion capture rig to his face for the beginning part of this? That's what I was just to do, yeah. a little teeny tiny bit, which is let's see, let me find. Uh, these, these have all been lost in the uh, layers of working. These are what my comps look like if I don't. I know that no one ever needs to see them, and I'm just trying to get them done at six in the morning. Uh, let's see. Was it this? Maybe. Where are we? Shirt. Oh, let me just look at the render. Yeah, yeah. One one problem with working this way is that it's it's likely that the the After Effects file doesn't exist by the end because I've just been just working on top of itself until I'm all the way done. Let's see. I'm that, just glad to see I'm not the only one that does this. <laughs> yeah, it's gone. Like those those archives are completely destroyed. All right. Was it this one maybe? This is just the render. Yeah, here we go. So I did a quick little bit at the beginning. Just grab this green screen <laughs> um, shirt which was, I think, from a stock image. What was great is that when I was trying to find reference for a green screen suit that I could key out and maybe place out, I think, where uh, your brother is uh, wearing, is on a blue screen wearing a green screen suit, and that <laughs> almost worked, except that I, that I think his arms were crossed or something like oh, that, man. so it didn't quite. But Peak VFX over here. Peak uh, yeah, speaking of which, yeah, like we we didn't get to digital double stuff today, but but if you didn't see our our promo, we, we were able to get to get this lovely version of Ryan. <laughs> I think that we should give away. I look like <laughs> I need medical attention. <laughs> you do. You look. You look all right from over here. 
And then we what got a him. handsome digital man. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> and I also had just like as a backup in case. <laughs> <laughs> That was so shocking. <laughs> he's always there. Even digitally, he's always there. Can't shake the kid. <laughs> oh, oh man, that's amazing. I do yeah, think I do think you. both Connollys count for a beautiful beard win. Hey, I'll take yeah, it. Yeah, you come from a long line of beautiful beards, right? Yeah. It's, a, it's just a, facial hair it's parents long, like your mom and your dad <laughs> yeah. long luxurious mm-hmm. line mm-hmm. yeah we it's, pour bourbon on our faces <laughs> is, is that weird is the same, same yeah since the same how is this demon tool, magic happening i don't know how you're doing this since the same the tool effect. is used to create these avatars the the uv mapping is the same for the way it does the faces <laughs> so there's there's your skin on <laughs> I don't. I, we we've moved out of. It's we, we, we've moved into welcome to Marwin territory. It's hey, this is still the Zemeckis the Zemeckis umbrella hour. We are still <laughs> under the Zemeckis umbrella. <laughs> we just need some nice motion capture animation, and we could make the Polar Express. I love. Uh, that. Is it true that all <laughs> of Polar Express was made using Move by Maxon on people on Robert Zemeckis's iPhone? <laughs> Yes. yes. There's no one here to tell us otherwise. Michael's here. Michael knows everything. For those who don't know. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Let me see. Wait. Um, wait. Can Do we have the three of you, Seth? Let me see if I can. Just one second. Get him on the. Uh, on the oh, yeah. Here. Yeah. Hold on. Let's. Uh, let me. Can we get Mr. Zemeckis on the phone? Hi, Bob. Oh, Bob. Oh, thank you for being here. Oh, Bob, you sound like Hashi when, when your brain talks. <laughs> yeah. Was that funny? I see you trying to hold that laugh in. Bob, you're happy to be here. Just admit it. Ryan, I don't think I can reach him. Can you? Nope, I can't. That's me. Ow, God. (laughs) Sorry, sorry. Give us a kiss, Bob. (laughs) (laughs) He's not amused. No, wait, wait, wait. Hashi, I mean, wait. Why is he so tight? Let's see. Bob, lean in. Can you give Ryan a kiss? Oh, God. (laughs) There he is. Oh. It's happening. It's wait, he wants me. Oh, oh Bob, <laughs> yeah, get off! Wait, where are you going, Bob? Where is he? Bob. Yeah. Bob. Typical Bob. 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 What a tease! He's <laughs> constantly trying to sit this on my is, lap. Get this is, Bob. by the way, when our bosses are going to tune in. Is right now while we are making out with Bob Zemeckis. <laughs> Hey, I'm just back from from a walk to the restroom. Did anything happen? Absolutely <laughs> nothing. Done. If the lawyers call, Perfect. nothing happened. You were here the whole time. Intimacy with Bob Zemeckis. That's what happened. <laughs> Damn it, Brian. <laughs> what? I'm proud of it. This is a pinnacle point God, in my life. I don't life. remember what I was doing here. Let's see. I do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So I realized I was trying to recolor the watch. Screw that. I'm just going to replace the watch. Like, I'm just going to put a new watch on top of it. Um, <laughs> Why did we think Recolor that? So the watch. I just took a picture of my the, my Apple watch, the one that is supposed to be. And, uh, yeah. Now, I am disappointed that I didn't switch the watches. Like, it just – it. I should have thought to switch the watches. Always switch the watches. That's what my dad said growing up. And – Always I never understood it until now. Seth, is, is it because you wear the Apple Watch because you want something useful, and then you wear that other watch because you want something retro? Is my that other, yeah? My other you? watch is to plug. I'm not sponsored by these guys. I don't even I don't know them at all. Like I, they're friends of friends. But Invisible Creature is one of my favorite uh, uh, design brands uh, out there. It's Don Don Clark and Don's I forget Don's brother. It's the two brothers. And they they design like. God, like decades of album covers, like Foo Fighters album mm-hmm. covers and all this stuff. And they also do a lot of illustration work now for like Target and for a whole bunch of folks. And they, their logo is like a mummy with one eye and it's the coolest thing ever. And they just released watches with like the, I don't have it on right now, but the, uh, if only I had video <laughs> that I could show what it looked like, but it's, it's really cool. It's like, it's like the, it's not a good shot of it, but it's like the mummy with 
they had come in different colors. And so I've just, I want the data with the Apple watch because I'm so healthy and I'm constantly doing fitness and I wanted the cool same other watch. Yeah. Uh, so that's what I do during the day when I'm home alone, when I'm home by myself. Actually, what it, what, it, where did you get, is that scan polycam? So, so I grabbed uh, a scan. Let me see if I, uh, let me let did you scan that or you grabbed it. I did not scan this. Oh, okay. Let me, let me let everyone know who did. It was, let's see. Da, ba, da, ba, da. Someone with a really, really clean mirror. Yes. Wait, let's see. Where? What is it? I think it's just called the uh, just like bathroom scan. Sorry, I'm a child. <laughs> bathroom 3D scanned by the workings. So thank you very much. Thank you for your bathroom scan. Lovely little, lovely little model, and uh, I I've brought it into uh, Cinema 4D here. And for my display options, I went up here. I didn't know this before, actually, was that I just turned on the back face culling so uh, I wouldn't have to see all of the room. I could just view it the way uh, you imagine. So you can see through the the back of the normals there. Hey, when you guys feel, uh, when you guys like hear a uh, uh, four syllable, a four head. syllable statement, do you also think of it immediately hear it in the, to the tune of the Muppet Babies theme? Or is that just me? Okay, cool. Anyway, back to Hashi. <laughs> it's what? my job to interject with weird things like these because I don't have the skills okay. that Hashi does. But I want an explanation. Okay, he me. said... Okay, the four syllables. He said back of the culling or something like that. He said something that was like four syllables. Back face, back face culling. culling. And so my back my brain culling. immediately went, back face culling, they make our dreams come true. That's immediately where my brain went. And I was curious Great. if anyone else has now, something like that. Now, now it will be. <laughs> Good. Thanks to Good. you. Good. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm sorry, everyone. Uh, Seth, uh, Stu suggests replacing everything except the watch. <laughs> That's what I'm doing at this point. <laughs> God. And uh, Ryan, if you were to, have you seen, uh, have you seen the Eternals? And if so, how would you recreate the laser eyes uh, that are fr in the Eternals? Uh, the game hacker is asking about it in the chat he says lasers are like the basic after effects stuff but it looks different in that particular i don't think anyone's show. seen the eternals seen, we've all seen the trailer I, yeah i've seen the trailer um we're right, actually right. gonna do an episode on that we're messing around with that right now on film riot awesome mm -hmm. i agree it's very cool so, you know uh, like and subscribe like and subscribe <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do an episode on that. We're me we're messing around with um, replicating the exact look right now. And you say we who's actually who's, do on your, less who's doing less, that on your team uh, now? Uh, Ryan Thompson. Oh yeah, he's awesome. Yeah, yeah. We have another VFX artist we work with named Joey. He's excellent. Um, so I'd pop in from time to time to do stuff like we did like a big VFX gun thing that I did in Cinema 4D. Uh, but I do, you know, less You've been less doing a lot of Cinema 4D lately all the per, time. in your personal time. Yeah, yeah. That and um, Unreal Engine I've been diving into a little bit to try to... It was like the one avenue that I really didn't know enough to be able to direct. Like I couldn't do any of it professionally, <laughs> but um, just know enough to be able to direct it. So I've been diving into that more. Plus there's a bunch of stuff we want to do with Unreal Engine. I think Unreal Engine is uh, really cool as far as like um, pre-production type stuff as well. But yeah, C4D has been like a really fun um, sort of end of the night, like uh, decompress sort of thing. Just make something randomly. Uh, so I've been messing around with that a lot. That is one of the big strengths of Cinema 4D for me. Like it is just something that is so much fun to play with like a lot of yeah. 3d software is like a struggle to learn or ah, i got one i want to get it but cinema 4d i it's just fun to play with yeah i was shocked how quickly i was able to start just building some stuff out yeah it's shockingly uh, easy to learn it's pretty intuitive because i've 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 relearned i've learned how to use it about 12 times in my career like it, like and it's taken me like it's taken me like four hours each time to like really figure out how to do what I wanted to do, do it, render it out and then yeah. bring it in after effects and work. And then I, and then I'll forget it because I'll have done what I needed. And then, 
I am in the same camp. <laughs> I, I don't quite remember, yeah, what ever what I'm doing. Or what. <laughs> I just looked at what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> that is horrifying. It reminds me of like the. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, that's so off putting. <laughs> it reminds me of the old like remember Goldeye Double O Seven. Yes, you that's a hundred percent what mode. it looks like is the big head mode. Yes. <laughs> now you just go oh man, we need like paintball guns now. <laughs> okay, you, yeah, we got we gotta figure out an Unreal Engine game <laughs> feature. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That was I was not paying attention to what you had on your screen at all. I'm just talking to Seth, and then, and then there you have it. Uh, so, <laughs> for the sake of simplicity, I just duplicated two copies of this bathroom scan. God. Oh, that's I like didn't... what they did in, uh, the, in Terminator Two when she's when she's working on the robot's head. There's a there's the yeah, digit, yeah. there's there's. Her twin is in one room, and she's in the main room. Arnold is in one room, and the dummy head's in the other. Yeah. So, but it looks like a mirror that's because also, they have identical sets on both sides. Absolutely. That's also Mission Impossible. I think Rogue Nation has a shot where they're taking a mask off of Simon Pegg or something and adding. But they have, like, the foreground person. There's, like, a whoever's back is to the camera is a stand-in. Whoever's on the other side is – yeah, it's super crazy and smart. Yeah, there's a great shot from um, a Zack Snyder film, which name is uh, escaping me. <clears throat> where they move through one side of the room to the other. Oh, it's, a with that exact it's a huge flex. So that yeah. <laughs> it's well pulled off too. Really, really good. Uh, man, what is the name of that, that film? Um, oh man. Uh, wasn't the owls of Gahul. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, it's with the, uh, they're the actioner. The, it's these girls that are in like oh, sucker punch hospital or something. Sucker, sucker punch. punch. Sucker punch. Yeah. Great, great mirror shot. shot. Yeah, yeah. I think that yeah, there someone has a great compilation discussion of uh, the mirror shots. Maybe I don't. Remember, it's probably corridor. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> probably yeah. Ah, uh, corridor. So, uh, corridor. We I love like corridor. I don't know why we're crapping on we, <laughs> I like how huge Maybe. our top half is, but like I imagine our bottom half is that of like a four-year-old because <laughs> of how small we are. It's like we, in Deadpool 2 where he's regrowing his legs. You know what I mean? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Let's see. What do we need? Let, I, let me see if I can find something. We got to have. Uh... My God, if you can make that happen. <laughs> Boy. Hey, so look, happy. my watch is black now. I just got to. I'm now just got to do something about the red underneath it on a few frames. But I have a black watch, at least over my red watch now. Hey, look at that. I'm glad that you spent half the show worrying about that watch that no one cared about. <laughs> you kind of. My wife have. texted me about it. I had to do it at that point. Oh, oh yeah, no, it's sorry, my bad. Yeah, that wife suggestions, yeah, for sure. Fantastic. <laughs> happy wife, happy life. I still. There's not such a catchy phrase when you've got a husband. Happy husband, happy. Husband. <laughs> you gotta figure that one out. Happy husband. Uh, happy husband, happy happy man. That's the pl- happy man. That's the plan. hey. That works. It's like, <laughs> done. You, did you make that up right now? Happy man, that's the plan. Yeah, oh boy, that's awesome. I love it. See, that's why Red Giant hired me because I come up with stuff like that. <laughs> Notice that was one of the f- few puns where I'm. I didn't want to sign you out of OBS up against your will. <laughs> <laughs> I actually love your puns. I all. I just for some reason that's my like go to response to really great puns is to be. I feel like. If you laugh at them, you're doing them a disservice, right? The idea is to treat them as if they're unwanted um, when really they're <laughs> wonderful. That's twisted. That's true. It's 152. I once again have spent an entire show on one shot while Hashi ran through 25 different shots that Apple TV all retweeted. <laughs> <laughs> For what it's worth, uh, I did just try to spend two hours doing what I'm pretty sure Ken Ralston and his team, God, they probably spent five minutes on it on set. Spent at least three. Yeah, but of course they had film scans and (laughs) were doing it on like, you know, computers that with the uh, render power of a Game Boy at the time. But anyway. All right, let's see here. Could you run? Much anticipation. Where's the ground? Where's the ground? Yes, it's happening. 
<laughs> What's in my back? <laughs> Good God. Uh, what do we... <laughs> it's so horrifying. <laughs> so, uh, also, yeah, no shade, but they are, the, the figures are labeled Ryan and not Ryan. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Josh. Okay, wait, let's see. Uh, maybe if we had a taper here, we could, um, let's see, turn the strength of this up, but turn this upside down. I, I barely okay. know cinema, but I do know the taper tool. Matthew Pencala from chat, Ryan, would like you to get Ryan Thompson to break down VFX work on the exploration short. I think he does have a breakdown video for it on his channel, <clears throat> where at least he shows go. before and afters. There I don't think go, he does man. any tutorials on them, but I can um, I could poke him on that for sure. Oh my god, <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> and I like that there's no, I like that there's no arms either. <laughs> it's just shoulders <laughs> and butt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is that? That's actually something that exists, like, not in real life, but in in movie uh, lore. Oh my god, it's fun. It's actually kind of funny when it has that like muffin top <laughs> shoulder deal. Josh, Josh is a muffin top <laughs> at this point. <laughs> the Muffin Man. This is your yeah. new horror film it's called The Muffin Man. The th trailer is just like a child singing. <laughs> Do you know the Muffin Man? <laughs> And then like ran, <laughs> and then it's just this the door slowly opening as Miss like pours in, and it's just a silhouette of that. Do you know me? <laughs> Miniature title. Oh dear. Tagline what? has to be get to know him. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> get to know him. That reminds me of when uh, when Inside Out came out. The you know the Pixar's Inside Out, and it. The po they had posters up with character posters where like it would have, you know, a different character on each one of them, like uh, joy and anger or whatever. And, and it would always say, yeah. uh, <laughs> Disney pictures invites you to meet, you know, whatever. And there, the, my favorite was, there's a big one by a bus stop near my house that said, Disney, Walt Disney pictures invites you to meet sadness. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they kill parents in every movie. <laughs> yes, it is. They hate parents. <laughs> they do. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Previously on my in my mix of mocash is a uh, mocap man with uh, Roy Kent's face because that was another <laughs> direction I considered going. You know, most of us are afraid of people seeing our Google searches, but I feel like your mixamo history is the thing that's going to do you in one day. Uh, I, my history is, is a trash heap of eccentricity at best. That's the name of my book. <laughs> trash heap of eccentricity. My book about Hashi. <laughs> All right. I'm going to see what happens here. This is, this should be interesting. We should everybody. probably call it pretty yeah, soon. I, I just I realized it's, it's almost two o'clock. We are going to call I mean, it. We do have three minutes left till it's a two hour show. Oh man! And then we and then we Absolutely. all turn into the muffin Clock's man. Ticking, Hashi. What if we all stood up we and we all. have no arms and we just have to? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's been building to this entire episode. It's just the big reveal. Oh, well, process that character. We can. <laughs> uh, I don't know what's going to happen with this thing, but. It was really wonderful to get to talk about the reason why we do visual effects. Yeah, I, I really like that we got to talk about the storytelling of it a bit yeah. on top. Yeah. Which is wonderful. Like it's the well, reason. That's the important why... thing. A, a visual effect should not be there just to be a visual effect. It should always be in service of the story. Yep. Speaking of. I like having. <laughs> <on> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> We have this on one side. We have we have me doing a weird dumb run, not in slow motion, opening a bathroom mirror to find s assortment of mugs, while <laughs> while you are working on Josh Connolly the Muffin Man, <laughs> building a rig, <laughs> <laughs> and you're having to try to put the points. Yes, <laughs> all in the service of story. <laughs> I want to 3D print this and put it on my desk. <laughs>
it's what it's and it what doesn't ever stand up spirits. it's it always falls over there's no way that it stands up yeah it's my dream catcher actually i'm gonna put it next to my bed so i have no more nightmares oh no well all right uh are we waiting on something on your end hosh or are we uh I mean, we can see if this if this Mixamo model. Oh, we resolves, should wait for that. Hundred percent. We can, we, we can, so we can sign up. It's this is the most important thing of my day right now. It's <laughs> waiting for this to resolve. This is. It's gonna be weird because it's gonna have a heart. <laughs> God, I hope so. Oh, and and just a pro tip: if you did want Mixamo to rig something like this, you could add two cylinders that are arms, and then just turn them off once you export the FBX again. Mm. Just like add those points and then delete them, or like you put uh, like if you want to make a scary creature, like put the head where the torso is, but put placeholder like stand in arms and things like that. But then you can turn them off later. But you could have this cool running around head that only has two legs. Finally, so, which is what, what I should have thought of. <clears throat> Please wait. Please wait. It's think. It's trying. It's, it's, it's so. It, con- it has, it's it so confused. You have confused medium. Mixamo beyond repair. So like, what Patrick did you give me? From the chat says that this episode was a great watch. Uh, oh God! Kick him off! Kick him off! <laughs> kick him off. <laughs> oh my God! Well, yeah, don't know if this will resolve or not. So let let's wrap it up. Well, thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of VFX and whatever the <laughs> heck we did. <laughs> oh my god, Connolly, you got you got like even more power oh, for. Oh, yeah. Huge. Oh, he's got yes, he's, boy. he's just looming. Uh well, all right. I'll just let you be the wizard of Oz here. Thank you everyone for tuning in all <laughs> however many of you this week. Uh what do we uh, where everyone knows where they can find you because they all came to this show to see you, Connolly. You're at Film Riot, youtubecom slash filmriot or filmriot.com. Yeah. Yeah, you can just go to filmright.com and have, that has everything there. Uh, anything cool Wonderful. you're working on? You want to hype? Uh, no, nothing specifically other than you know the show, the stuff we're doing uh, uh, on the side. So you know, just continuing to truck forward. Excellent. Um, Amazing. Yeah. Uh, so now that you've seen us experts really <laughs> demonstrate our amazing knowledge of things. Um, uh, we do invite you uh, every Monday to join our uh, demystifying post-production uh, series, which is uh, available every Those are week, our real Monday experts. Mornings. Those are the actual yeah, the, experts at Maxon. The, the, <laughs> the, the, yeah, the people who's jo- who are actually yeah cleared as and uh, certified as experts and trainers of the software that we are uh, – demolishing yeah to a public audience <laughs> right now <laughs> you're doing a service an important service on that note and yes. uh, this oh. this so, next monday kicks off the new series of making things look terrible about how to grind hey. up footage make it look more uh more analog more dirty more real and, they, and uh, yeah that starts off this week so red giant has put the link in the chat so you can register to join and that they webinar didn't series. invite us yeah, making things look terrible was the original title of Film Riot, so I don't know. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Bye, Ryan's chair. <laughs> I don't know. Bye. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Please come back and chill with us again. Uh, we have more exciting guests coming in the coming weeks, but how could they get more exciting than Ryan Connolly? Oh, I, I'm so, I, I know we're out of time. But... Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, oh did we... it finish? It finished. It's so important. Oh, no. Oh no! No! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> that is as horrifying as I hope. Please send, export these and send them to me. <laughs> oh my god! It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for learning with us. See you next week, everybody. (laughs) For sharing this.